Greetings, Vault citizens. Johnny5 Alive here, your Vault Overseer, and welcome back to another episode of Vault Tech Settlements. Let's build. And in today's video, we're going to be building the Minutemen headquarters as part of our Sanctuary Reborn project. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, guys, diving right on into things. In the last video, we I ended up spending the first couple minutes, uh, which would have been like first half an hour, uh, because it's sped up, just placing down the things we were gonna need for our inn. And this time, I already placed all that stuff down, got an idea of what I wanted to use uh, before I even started recording. So you'll see all this stuff scattered on the street. That is what I decided we'd end up using so I could slide into place. Try to find anything Minutemen related or I guess um, like Renaissance or... <laughs> what, what other... I, I'm, I'm trying to find the term that they use, but... Yeah, and anything that justifies anything with um, justice or retribution, anything of that nature, um, we we want to put that in there. So we got lots of flags, and um, we just got some some posters of weapons and different things like that. So let's let's dive into talking about what I'm doing. Uh, we're doing six times speed again, guys. I'm doing this recording back to back with the last one. So what what you guys end up watching in episode two with the the in, I'm recording this right after that. So there would have been a spotlight in between that was real time, and then this, and I don't know how many days they are spaced apart. So any feedback that you would have given me on episode two, I wouldn't be reading that until. A f at least a few days from now um, so it's impossible for me to take that feedback and and put it forward the only feedback I have to go off of right now is what you guys said on episode one and there there were some comments saying speed it or slow it down and then there were some comments saying that it was fine um, now with that episode I I, I still I want to mention this again I said said this in the last one that we were doing a lot of scrapping and movement in that first one whereas this one we're it's gonna be a little bit more meticulous unless we're running around placing vents like I am now it's not gonna be too jarring as you can see the screen right now is perfectly still and slowing it down would do us no favors here however when we're looking around and going to a new spot it's a little bit jarring um, but we'll slow it down and we'll start building something so when I'm kind of navigating the house looking around just getting a feel for things yeah it's it's a little bit crazy so this is a strange process where it's like maybe some parts need to be sped up and some parts need to be slowed down but for me to sift through six hours of footage to do that seems literally impossible so um, I'll, I'll put some thought into it in between this episode and the next one because at the time of this recording I haven't built anything further so the only things that I have built so far at this moment in time is the Minutemen headquarters and the rights in. So I'll, I'll consider some things of what I can do and, and, and by then when I start building my next one um, I hopefully have a couple episodes out hearing your guys's comments because maybe these ones aren't as bad as the very first episode that's that's what my intentions or my thoughts were and that's why I decided to stick with my guns and keep it at six times speed you guys got to remember when we watch planet coaster builds and any planet coaster builds that I've done in the past or any other channel the standard is eight times speed I, I decided to knock it down a couple notches for this because it is first person but generally speaking, as you're seeing here, I'm just looking through menus and staying still in one spot. So generally, it's pretty good. Um, you can tell what I'm doing, you get a gist of it. The only thing you don't really get to absorb is when I'm looking around getting the immersion. But we're going to be doing spotlights on all these in between. So we build it, we spotlight it. We build it, we spotlight it. And then we'll go back and forth. That way we build up our Let's Build series, and then we also build up our settlement spotlight series so it's a little bit of back and forth and I think it'll be it'll be pretty good but we'll, we'll, we'll leave me your, leave your thoughts down below again if it's still too fast for you we'll consider doing the next one at four times speed 
and in two parts because the reason it's in six parts right now or six times speed is so I don't have to do a two-parter video and I wasn't prepared for a two-parter video if we do a two-parter I'm gonna have to save the game collect cinematic footage of what our progress is so you guys can see how much we built at the end of the episode I just don't have that footage here, so this episode would just end abruptly <laughs> in the middle of everything just being placed. So uh, I kind of have to. My hand is forced at six times speed. Um, and I don't know, maybe I'll do some more building today or tomorrow, so um, I'll have to keep that stuff in mind. Like maybe after every four or five hours of building, I get some cinematic footage, and that's our first part. And if we don't finish the build, we don't finish the build. But right now, for these first few episodes, I've been... Like, I just want the episode start to finish. Look, we built something. We're done. We're moving on. Uh, so, whatever it be, 30 minutes to an hour, we start to finish, we, we built something. Now, I can see two parts being good. Um, especially if it's it takes, like, if it's an 8 or 10 hour build. And, uh, you know... I th it, it just it stretches out the content a little bit better, but I wasn't prepared for that. So uh, I, th I think as I go forward to build, if I if I've been building for four or five hours, I go okay, time to get some cinematic footage, and and this will be a part one. It, it's really hard to determine these things because you want to you want the two part episode to be equal portions. <laughs> so if I do four hours of building and then I finish it in another two, well. It technically, it could have just been one really long one part at six times speed, but instead, we gotta we gotta try and figure this out. It, it's it's a tricky process. Let's put it that way, guys. I'm I'm figuring it out. We're figuring it out together. It's okay if the first few episodes are a little bit too fast. We're we're still building something really cool, and that's what matters. And you guys will get to see everything in close detail at real time in the spotlights. So I think it all works out pretty good. So I, I, that's what I kind of want to know in the comments next. I haven't built the first episode of um, the time of this recording. You guys would have already watched the Let's Build the Inn, but I, I haven't recorded the spotlight. But you guys would have seen the spotlight if you're watching this now. So, having said that, I want to know what your thoughts are down below. Is it still too fast if you get to see a spotlight afterwards? Does that make up for it? Or is this just hard to watch? And that's what I, what, what I need to know. Because I, I really don't know what it is that... I've, I've seen some people saying slow it down, but I don't know why slow it down. Is it too hard to watch, or do you just want to see things better? And uh, it could be a bit, bit mixture of both. But I'm going to make up for it by making a spotlight. And uh, those spotlights will have bonus content. And I mentioned this in the previous video. That uh, we'll have settlers, jobs, uh, assignments. And we're going to have liveliness in our settlement. Or in that area of the settlement for the spotlight so it'll have some ambience it'll it'll be quite cool to look at which you don't really get to see i can't do a let's build on that stuff because it's so boring and it's just bug testing and it's it's it was a headache and i talked a lot about this in the last episode so i'm going to try not to touch on that here um unless yeah i mean i'll talk about a little bit of what i do here we we do put prisoners in that jail that you guys saw me building we make a guard post, and that's what I'm trying to build here as a guard post. I talked about compositions, and I really want... I don't want this to just be a house. I want it to scream security or headquarters. And in order to do that, I need to build something. And I talked more about this. We want to... It's, it's Sanctuary Reborn, but with what we have available in this wasteland. So whether they're going out and get gathering wood from other sites or other settlements... Or, you know, they, they're stealing signs and things from different places. They're bringing it here, and they're rebuilding their, their settlement up. Uh, that's what we're going for, is it's it's been refurbished w with really... Um, <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> makeshift pieces. So I'm trying to 
add in a guard tower of some sort, and then I just found one. <laughs> and I was I wanted to build something off the building, but then I was looking, I was like, oh, that actually really adds to the composition. And that was the original point of building a tower on top of the house, is I didn't want it to just be a flat house. I wanted there to be depth in its height and its depth. So it's, it's Y and Z axis. I need some undulation and things leading your eye around. And this tower, I like the green one, but it didn't have stairs. But this tower, it looks good there. Now, pure white wasn't too good, and then I did run into a bug. You might catch a glimpse of it at one point. You'll see Preston Garvey walking into the building, and he's just, like, running into the wall. It looks like that building wasn't properly nav-meshed, or the collision wasn't... Yeah, it wasn't set up properly for AI. And you'll find that time to time with some of these settlement expansion pieces. So I always say if it's a big, important piece that you're putting down, uh, test it. A long time ago, about two years ago, I, I started playing around with the mods, and I built this big dome, and it was an amphitheater. And I was going to have a singer in there, and speakers, and I got the whole thing built. <laughs> I spent so much time on it, and the, the singer couldn't get to the microphone, and I was going, what's going on here? There's Preston, he's bumping up against it. He's having, she was having that issue, or she couldn't get to where she wanted to go. And that's because there was one big collision box over the whole thing. There wasn't interior collision and, I guess, negative collision properly sculpted in. So, uh, it didn't work. And I built all that stuff, and then I was like, screw it. I'm like, I'm done with these mods, and I, I spent all that time building this thing, and I just gave up on it. I said, F you know, let's, let's move on. Um, but now... With Fallout 76, I've been inspired to come back to it, but I'm just going to do it right and be careful. That's all. So we found this building here, and we put it down, we put it into place, and then I'm kind of worried about this bug, because the characters are just going to walk into the side of the building. They're going, what's going on? There is a way to fix that. We just put actual nav-meshed pieces down around it. So... You'll, you'll see me at one point, or maybe I do it off camera, maybe I do it on, but at one point you'll see wooden boards around the bottom of it. And that just makes it so th those boards have nav meshes, and if they're, if I put them perfectly over top, the NPCs will now recognize that there's a building there, and they're not going to walk into it. And that does, in fact, solve our problem. Um, so while that building had collision, it didn't have AI navigation. So if you build AI navigation over top of it, it'll work. So we, we really just wanted that thing there for looks reasons. And it did seem that the stairs did work on it because I, I did get a guard up in that tower. Uh, they have a hard time getting up in there, but once you've told them to like go there and you wait an hour, the boom, they're in there. So it does seem to work. Um, and I really like the composition what it did for the composition. So I wanted to make it work even if I had to kind of find some workarounds. And there's always a workaround, guys, and sometimes you'll find a piece that you really like. You might need to use it for just decoration. Sometimes it won't work for AI navigation. So there's certain things you got to keep in mind and, and how you're going to use them in your settlements. Do you want a character to sleep in here? Does it work? Test it. And, and be sure to test that kind of stuff. I'd say most of the stuff in the mods are really good. Like these houses, they're they're completely modded, uh, remade houses, and they're perfectly nav meshed. The characters walk through them perfectly. I would say the two-story house has its issues, but we only have one of them. All the one-story houses seem pretty darn good. So uh, I, I definitely think that I'd say 99, maybe 95% of modded items have perfect nav meshes and collision. So not to worry, don't get scared off by that. And here I uh, I realized that we can scale the, the letters in the last episode. So we're going to scale these neon letters up to 300% and put Minutemen on the front in green. I think, I don't know, going with the green flowy colors, I think that represents the Minutemen pretty good. I mean, generally they're wearing like brown hats and brown or yellow jackets. Uh, but I think the green works well here. We have the green... It's just naval officers and stuff. That's what I think of when I think of the 
the Minuteman is that that's sort of stuff. So we have the statues out front. I think that the guy with the gun is a Minuteman statue. I think that's what it's called. The green lions. So we have the green font. Um, you know, whatever touches of green I can add in is what I want to do here. And then when we add the trees and stuff, it brings it all together. It'll be pretty nice. So, um, because the Minutemen are about recruiting people, I put a bunch of recruitment posters out front and different things like that. Uh, I'm putting this Boston poster down so that there's a little bit of a backdrop for this, um, what do you call it? This neon radio sign. Because then it's because of the nature of it being blue on the blue house, it just fades away and you can only see it at nighttime. So I put that little poster behind it so that it pops. We have the recruitment beacon out front because I was just saying that the Minutemen are about recruiting people. So we have the recruitment posters. We need to have like a recruitment radio room. And I think that fits perfectly for this little building. It, it, it goes with it adds to the theme so not only are they the security they're the recruitment office so they're the protectors of the town so the first thing that you see when you come into the town if a raider came in they're forced to face the minutemen who are protecting the sanctuary but not only that new visitors or settlers who come into this area um, they see the Minutemen recruitment office. So, you know, they heard them on the radio and they see the radio station. So it serves a dual purpose and it, both of those dual purposes are really well themed around the Minutemen. So I thought having this nice little radio room uh, fits really well to what we're trying to do here. And <clears throat> having the on-air thing, a radio thing, and a, a computer. Uh, we have all these little computer gadgets and different things there. Um, we can have Later on, you'll see in the spotlight, in the next, I guess, spotlight episode, is there would there will be jobs and people working those radio stations, and it's pretty cool. It, it brings the liveliness of this room together. So we're trying to find all the different things that would make this radio room good. So we need some tools in case they have to fix the radio or something's wrong. So I'm just kind of trying to think of that stuff for, again, tell, doing that storytelling. There's a lunchbox, then, you know, something to eat while they're waiting, some more tools, and then we're going to go into OCD decorators, some garbage cans. You know, we, we want to have everything that you would need in this room and not just have it kind of lifeless. We want to add as much life as possible. Um, playing around with the fridges. Some fridges are storing. Store, uh, yeah, they're, they're containers, and you can store things in them. Other fridges from other packs, like my modular kitchen pack, are... All right, this is do-it-yourself. Yeah, do-it-yourself, you can have a shell of a fridge, fill it up with things. So I'm finding Nuka-Colas, um, you know, all sorts of liquors, and then you put a door on it at the end, and it'll be a door... You can open the fridge. You can see me there <laughs> opening it up, and then it... it so it's full of drinks and things. So these uh, settlers that are working this room have lots of cold beverages because they're going to be doing lots of talking. They're going to need to drink. So there it goes all goes into the storytelling that this is a place that you want lots of beverages. Um, you're sitting here for long periods of time. So I think an ashtray, pack of cigarettes, uh, some lighters. So they could just sit there, chain smoke, drink. They quench their thirst. They can. The nicotine helps them stay awake, stay stay alert, um, and you know they it gives it gives them something to pass the time, and uh, the water's there to keep their throat clear while they're on the radio, and then we want to bring in that kind of recruitment stuff posters into the the room. So I thought the perk chart might be kind of cool because they're you know we were attracting people of all different. Um, skill sets and backgrounds so the, the perk chart kind of represents diversity and that's what the Minutemen are all about having a diverse lineup of people everybody's welcome and then uh, you know all the join us style posters and things like that um, victory for tomorrow I think that one's brotherhood but eh, eh, it works here too um, we're not really doing as, as, as far as I can think of right now I don't I don't see brotherhood having any presence in our sanctuary reborn maybe something will come to mind I think for our weapon and armor shops we'll probably have little hints of brotherhood because we'll have the power armor and there'll be different brotherhood um, power armor sets that that'll be like we'll have things from their faction in terms of armor 
and pieces in incorporated, but I don't think we'll have any like Brotherhood of Seal headquarters here. If we were to do something like that, I mean, I already showed you guys my Brotherhood uh, museum. If you didn't see that, it's one of my settlement spotlights. So, <clears throat> you know, I've already done that, and it's part of the airport, and it's a museum. So if I were to do a Brotherhood thing in a future build, I'd have to come up with a completely new idea. I'd probably use the airport as well. Um, we'll see, but yeah, I, I kind of want to leave them out of it and save those ideas for another day. Here, Sanctuary, you know, the, it's Brotherhood create controversy. Some people say they're evil. I think in the previous games, like Fallout 2, they were, a big, they were the saviors of the Wasteland. And in Fallout 4, they seemed like like dicks. <laughs> no, for back of, lack, lack of a better term, they were just a bunch of assholes. Uh, however, they have a, a sweet spot in my heart, the Brotherhood, because of Fallout 2. I mean, the Enclave was a uh, the, the big bad scary guy that rolled, rolled around in the craziest power armor. They had giant mechs, like gigantic mechs, and they just went around raiding people and stealing their stuff and murdering everybody that didn't join them. The Brotherhood was the exact opposite. They were salvaging things and recruiting people to take on the forces of the Enclave. And that's, to me, made them the heroes, the good guys, the paladins. And I'm always about paladins in games. I love playing the paladin. I love siding with the paladin. Um, and, and to me, the Brotherhood were just a crew of paladins taking on the juggernaut death knight that was the Enclave. Uh, so... Yeah, I, I, I love the Brotherhood, and in this game, they were kind of portrayed as the big villain. Um, until you found out about the Institute, the uh, the Brotherhood seemed like the bad guy. They just came in, we're, we're taking over this area, whether you like it or not, and uh, you could kind of just, spoiler alert, choose to take them out. And, uh, you know, they, they, they were definitely harder and more furious of an enemy than the Institute. So, <clears throat> that's what I didn't like about Fallout 4, is like... The Institute... If you're gonna have a presence in the game, the Enclave is your perfect enemy. They're, they're something to be afraid of. And here, the Institute was more of like a, a stealth assassin. They stuck people in the night and did things to them, and... You know, they didn't... Uh, it, was, it was more of like an underground enemy. Um, undercover. And the Brotherhood was, boom, right there in your face, like, we're a bunch of jerks, and look at all our, our stuff, you know, try and take us out, try and stop us, and they taunted you, and they, they kind of, they were enemy B when the real enemy was the Institute as enemy A, but most people um, looked at the Brotherhood as the big enemy in this game, the big reckoning force, and that's because the they, they overshadowed the Institute, which I didn't like at all. So anyways, all that ranting, <laughs> because I don't want to, I, I, I want to, I'm trying to fill the time, but also like the, the Minutemen represent something completely different than the Brotherhood. And what I think the Minutemen, I'm trying to bring this all back around, guys, I have a point to this. The Minutemen are like the new Brotherhood. That's what kind of throws, irks me, is everything that the Minutemen represent is, you know, the peace, the divinity, and bringing people together for a better tomorrow. That was the Brotherhood! <laughs> That's at least what they used to be in, in the previous lore and previous games. And the Minutemen now come in to fill that role. So, um, rather than, you know, complaining and whining and, you know, just, you have to accept it for what it is. And embrace it. So that's what we're doing here. We're building the Minutemen headquarters and f making it feel like a, a place of retribution. And um, that's why I don't want to include anything Brotherhood here because I th feel like they do the same thing. And it, the way I would paint the Brotherhood is the same thing as the way I'm doing that for the Minutemen. So it would be two of the same with different themes. Um, well, it's it's really hard to theme them differently, other than their their strength, their power, and their presence, and throwing in you know power armor everywhere <laughs> and big bulky objects. Um, they 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 have a different feel, but they represent the same thing. So you do come you, you, in terms of theming, you get a lot of uh, repeating nature. So we're definitely excluding them, and we're we're embracing the Minutemen here, and and trying to give them. 
their little outpost. But the Minutemen is a small man. He's the small guy. He's the Brotherhood. Um, it's like the founding days of the Brotherhood. Like, if, if we could look back at how the Brotherhood first began, that's kind of like where the Minutemen are now. So we don't want a huge presence or a, a big sense of power. We want them to feel, uh, you know, uh, human. <laughs> we want them to feel like the little man, the minute man. So we're, we're giving them enough. We're giving them that little, um, you know, arms room. But it's not the biggest arms room. It's not an armory. It, it's, it's a small armory, but it's not a facility facilitating all their stuff. It's not a Pridwin. <laughs> God no! It's <laughs> so, and they don't have a Liberty Prime, but they have their muskets and their musketeers. So we're we're keeping them small and quaint, but we're giving them um, we're giving them some tools. So here I'll start building a, a shooting range in a second. We want them to have a place to train their their people at, and we need them to have supplies. So they everything they have is. To represent power, like if you were a raider and you came in here, you should be afraid. These Minutemen, they are, they're going to give you problems. They're not going to obliterate you like the Brotherhood would, <laughs> but they, they're a force to be reckoned with. And we're giving them all the, the, the necessary tools. So this here is another supply room. The, the downstairs supplies is more your stock supplies, food supplies, and things like that. And up top is our guard room, so our guards that are guarding this room are going to need access to ammunition without going all the way downstairs to the safe house. If they got pinned down in their position, they're going to need a resupply. And, you know, then that begs the question, I, I couldn't snap a door to that. Like I said, the nav meshes and the, the building wasn't proper, so we just put a door frame in to fix our problem. And, uh, yeah, we're going to want a security door. So if an assassin managed to get in, he can't just sneak up those stairs and shank our guard and have access to all that ammunition, then breaking into the Minutemen headquarters, killing our guard, and accessing the armory. So we want all these rooms to be protected. This is a supplies room. So it has food and things that the, the guards might need on a break. And, you know, drinks and beverages, all that stuff. So we still want a good locked door for that. So now our guard tower is, is well protected here. Um, we have an armory that's well protected. We have a radio room and our radio broadcasters are also protected by everything that we just built into it. So that's a it's a safe haven to do your radio work without worrying about um, raiders. Here I'm playing around with the um, like I wanted bunks and I was like we're probably gonna have a lot of Minutemen and I have this mod that allows bunks to work and you can actually get them on top and do these things but the room is too small so I'm, I'm just playing around with how the mod works and uh, what my options are and I just I wanted to test it but then also I'm realizing well I'm just not gonna have enough room uh, I end up going with I think a double bed and a bunk bed and while there is no ladder to the bunk bed if I assign with the home builder pillow to the top bunk it still will get used but the character will kind of like walk up to it and float into the air and then get onto the bed it looks a little funky but for the most part all you care about is I mean that's one minute of a 24-hour day. I don't think you'll ever catch them going to their bed station and, and sleeping. So you'll probably never see that animation. But you will walk into the room and see someone sleeping on a top bunk. And that's always a nice thing to see uh, is working bunks. So I really like that mod. So we do have a, a double bed that can be used by two people. A, a bunk that can be used by two people. But we also have an inn across the street. So I knew... No matter how many Minutemen I decide to have here and interact with, I thought that was cool. <laughs> there was a bed that Dogmeat could use. It's a coach bed for Dogmeat. <laughs> Came with one of my mods. I quite like that. Um, although I can't assign Dogmeat to it, which is unfortunate. I would like it if he was always just chilling there waiting for me. Uh, he kind of wanders around, doesn't he? I gotta figure out something for him because I, I kind of want him to be the, like... You know, he's a cop dog. He's a Minuteman dog. I want him to be a part of that crew and integrate him somehow. So I'm going to see if I can find anything 
for him, but at this moment I haven't found anything. Uh, he just wanders around Sanctuary. I think maybe if I delete the dog houses, he might come around and have one dog house near the Minutemen headquarters. That might work. Um, here I'm building us a shooting range. Now, I was, I was kind of torn on this because it's like, do I want the shooting range here or do I want it at our weapon shop that we end up making? Maybe we'll have one at each. I'm not sure how I want to treat it yet, but we do need to train our minute men. So I think here was the better option of the two. I could have a small shooting range at the weapons shop or just a target up something over there. Uh, we we kind of need something, but a main, you know, legitimate shooting range would be here. So we want concrete. Obviously, we don't want metal because we don't want too much ricocheting bullets. I think concrete still might cause ricochets, but at least it'll cause impact on the concrete, chip away, um, absorb the bullet somewhat, I guess. I don't really know ballistics and all that <laughs> rigmarole. I'm just making assumptions here. We don't want wood because it'll pierce. So I figured I'd go with a concrete base, um, have little windows, the side doors to anyone that needs to change targets, they can access, get inside there. Uh, we wanted a locked safe room so no one just walks on in there and gets shot. So, um, we want it to be a functional, believable armory, I mean, a uh, uh, shooting range, but yeah, have it also safe. So I, I built it here and you guys won't actually see it come to life until the spotlight, but I actually got to play around with these mechanics that come with the marker mods that I downloaded. And it works really, really great. Some some you can put down where there's someone just standing there shooting all the time. But it was annoying hearing that, just pow, 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 pow in the background. And I gave the person a musket, a Minuteman musket, so it's like... It's that big, loud laser musket sound, and it was just constantly going off. I mean, they have to wind it up, so it's like... They wind, hand, hand cranking it, and then... So every, like, few seconds you would hear that, and it was driving me nuts. So I was, I was looking through the mod and seeing what I had available here. And one of the markers is a lounging marker. And there's two, two of them. You can only have two in one settlement. There's a limit of one of each. And there's a pulse and there's one that's toggle. So it's actually a really cool system. I put down the yellow toggle and the blue pulse. And I put the markers down in the background. You'll see them there. And they're, they're loungers. And then there's a scoreboard that attaches to it. And I hooked it all up. And it just works. It's amazing. So the it, it doesn't. No one's assigned to it. It's just a leisure thing. So I mark this area as a leisure area, and you will get people like Sturges that come by, um, or the the various characters, and they'll just uh, pick up a weapon and start shooting. And if there's two of them there, there's kind of like a scoreboard, and they're, they're competing. And I thought that was really freaking cool. So um, it, it's not like there's someone always at the shooting range practicing. But like if people are bored or they're on their break and they have leisure time or they're any... Uh, most of the leisure characters that I have in this or in my settlement are the named characters. Sturges, Marcy Long, and and uh, and th those people. Um, so Because if you sign them jobs, sometimes they just bug out and they don't listen to you. So... I want most of the uh, most of the named characters or all of them to to have a job, but n an unreliable job. So something that I'm like, I, I would like you to do this once in a while, but if you w walk around in sandbox, I'm totally fine with that. So you give them a job that you don't care if they're they just decide to not do it. Um, so yeah, essentially what I'm trying to say is all of those named characters are sandboxing, and they'll just we have to have tasks for them to do and the shooting range is one of them so and we'll probably have more sandboxing ai in the future as this town starts to build up and get more popular and we add in more things we'll, we'll probably have people on breaks and different things so it's nice to know that there's a shooting range there that will get used at random and it's not just constantly going off. And I, and I quite liked it as I was building and playing around with things. I would all of a sudden hear pow, 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 pow. And I'd go over there and there's two people having a shoot off. And it was quite enjoyable to see it working like that. 
And in my previous settlement, the very first settlement spotlight that I showed you guys of my big giant fort, I had a shooting range, but it just it was just there for the player character. It was for me to go up and practice, and it didn't serve much purpose. And I like this finally having like a, a working shooting range that looks and works and feels like a shooting range and uh, has that AI net interaction. Definitely adds that little liveliness, and it's what we needed for our Minutemen headquarters. So it adds that theme. We have the radio room, we have the shooting range, we have the guard tower, and it all brings it together, and we have our small man, our Minuteman, making a big statement in the wasteland. Um, here, I'm just trying to add to that composition. We talked about this in the last video. And... Uh, you know, trying to add in like those directional forces in and around. So I keep zooming out. And it's always a good thing to do um, to back up and look at your composition. Don't just put place things down willy nilly. Try to fill areas, but leave areas open where there's negative spaces. So we want some negative spaces to kind of direct the eye towards certain things. So like certain branches, you want to guide them just concaving and arcing over the garage roof so there is that little bit of negative space so you can kind of see behind it and all that stuff helps lead your eye towards the center that is which is the Minuteman building and we have some behind just to create you know um, depth and different things like that we want to now I'm going in and adding rocks so our first person um, tour when we walk through it we have directional forces as well. We also want a rock wall behind that concrete. Just like we, they put it up, they built it up, and they are, they're just fortifying things. And and it just adds to the, the the nature and the immersion in that area. And then our trees, you know, they, they planted these trees. Something like that tree would have taken like, I don't know how, <laughs> 200 years to grow. So maybe it was one of the, the first trees to start springing up after the war. And um, at, when we got here, it was there. Um, so s now that the settlers have been rebuilding everything, replanting things, uh, it, it makes sense that maybe some ferns and things will start sprouting up or maybe they were planted or what have you so I'm trying to add some ferns and different things to different areas just to give it that liveliness this is the wasteland this is a, a grungy place but we we want to restore it and that's the whole point of sanctuary reborn or sanctuary restored I should say um, but yeah we they planted a couple flowers here and there so I'm, I'm adding whatever I can that uh, will make it look pretty. That's not too lore breaking, you know. The we're not adding in, uh, we're not turning this into a, a green house or anything like that. We're we're not adding um, tons and tons of flora and uh, crazy things like that. Just weeds. <laughs> weeds is like their way of decorating. It's what what managed to survive and plants that basically never die that are resilient. We're adding those kinds of things. So, I'm trying to <laughs> justify this being as believable as possible so that at the end of the day, when we're finished our build, it, it's not going to be painted as something completely lore breaking or immersion breaking, but something that also can be believable. So, I quite am happy with the way this Minuteman headquarters turned out, and I'm excited to show you guys the actual spotlight with the NPCs working about. We've I think I've recruited like six or so, maybe more Minutemen. So there is a little bit of a presence there. And you can really feel that coming in. There's there's Minutemen everywhere. Minutemen and women. And uh, they're guarding. They're doing their jobs. They're, you know, and it doesn't feel like you just walk in there and it's this empty house. No, it, it does feel like a headquarters. And I, I quite like the way it turned out. And I'm, I'm pretty happy. So here's, here's some cinematic shots showing off what we built and there there are some minor tweaks that you guys will see in the spotlight some some subtle changes here and there we changed up the shooting range and things like that and uh tweaked a few things so that's where i'm at on all my builds right now guys uh i spent the rest of my time since this video or, or yeah since since i made this uh tweaking the ai and getting certain mods to work so i can uh, make sure we have a lively sanctuary. But now I think I'm ready to move on to building again. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think we'll move on to the armory or the weapon shop. One of the two. So there you go, guys. That's going to do it for this episode of 
Sanctuary Let's Build. If you enjoyed, please be sure to smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more daily videos. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so by becoming a patron. Your support is very appreciated as it helps me to build these videos for you guys. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a fantastic day, and we will see you in the next Let's Build. Bye now.